co-chair of the Financial Innovation Caucus, Wyoming Senator Cynthia Lummis. And it, it, I mentioned it earlier, it calls you a Bitcoin-friendly federal lawmaker. I would say that, along with a crypto-knowledgeable federal lawmaker, that's about as rare as a frugal central banker, Senator. <laughs> uh, you, you don't find many of, of either. Are you Bitcoin friendly? Do you, do you think that it actually does represent a store of value like gold? I do think it represents a store of value like gold. Uh, it is going to be something that will allow people of all means, age groups, uh, and individuals uh, to save and have something that will uh, store value for the long term, unlike the U.S. dollar, which we're spending so massively, as you pointed out, that we're debasing the value of the U.S. dollar. So it's important that Congress begin to focus on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in a way that will allow us to give people options for saving in the future. Yeah, and, and the, the dollar, compared to pick your currency around the world, where, where you know where you've got inflation rates you know pick a number where you see it in some parts of the world and citizens there could use bitcoin to to protect against a currency that's that's going down 50 percent in a month things like that. i mean the dollar you you do point out we got our own problems but that's why you know globally this could really help people that are trying to preserve the value of their hard-earned uh, currency that, that that they make um, you've got a lot of work to do. The, it, when you go around the Senate, how many of the, your, your uh, fellow senators do you think uh, have a good grasp of what we're talking about here? And maybe this will help. Very few have a good grasp, which is why we're forming this caucus. So I've teamed up with Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona to educate members of Congress, uh, staffers, uh, and work with uh, people at the various regulatory agencies as well as the innovators in the industry to understand what the appropriate base of regulation and legislation is so the innovators can continue to innovate the regulators don't get in their way but we find a solid base a good sandbox that people can have uh, some structure to but that nevertheless allows them to continue to innovate in this space you point out that you believe that the, the U.S. needs a digital currency of its own uh, to, to compete with a digital yuan. What does that mean for the future of, of existing uh, digital assets like Bitcoin? A and at, at this point, you see what China might be able to do with mining or regulation of Bitcoin. How do you... How do you look at that in terms of whether it really will be viable long term when a country like as big as China and as powerful as China could come in and just pull the rug out uh, from, from it uh, or at least attempt to do that? You think that's impossible to do? This is a very freedom friendly uh, type of currency, uh, if you will. Uh, it allows people to move their assets around. Uh, without being under the strictures uh, of a fiat currency. Uh, and that's one of the great freedom factors that is associated with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So I think this provides great opportunity around the world for people whose governments get oppressive or allow inflation to run out of control. This is something that's going to be much more stable. And it's important that we have uh, a digital dollar uh, to go with a digital yuan and other currencies that are issued by uh, fiats because uh, we need to keep the dollar uh, the uh, world uh, reserve currency uh, and china is trying to threaten us in this uh, world financial uh, sector so it is very important that we be current that we be ahead of the game and provide opportunity for the u.s dollar to remain strong and the digital currency of the world Sen Senator, can you speak to this? Uh, we saw the Colonial Pipeline um, get uh, effectively hacked uh, and uh, ransomed, if you will. And what was it ransomed for? Cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, we keep right. hearing uh, week after week about various cryptocurrencies which are used in these ransomware attacks across the country and across the globe where we are seeing cryptocurrency used for illicit purposes. And, and the question is whether Bitcoin, for example, its very structure can exist if it's regulated. Um, do you, what, what's your take on that? 
Well, that's why it's important that we have a financial innovation caucus before we start legislating about things we don't know about. Consumer protection and to detect fraud in these systems is one of the important things that we uh, need to address as Congress and uh, federal regulators grapple uh, with the newness uh, of digital currencies and Bitcoin specifically. So uh, it is not used for illicit purposes. We know that up until now, uh, fiat currencies, the dollar, has been used every bit as much for nefarious purposes as Bitcoin has. What we need to do is make sure that uh, we're addressing consumer protection uh, at the same time that we're providing this regulatory sandbox. Senator, I have to push back on, on, on that, not because you're wrong. Uh, U.S. dollars, cash, has always been used uh, in illicit ways, um, and clearly Bitcoin is being used in illicit ways. But the efficiency with which Bitcoin can be used in illicit ways relative to U.S. dollars is like night and day. It, it's, it, it's not even comparable because I could send you an enormous amount of money uh, via Bitcoin that I can't, I, I can't carry enough briefcases of cash. And so I don't understand why we keep making that comparison. Well, because, as you point out, factually, that is true. Uh, there are ways to detect fraud within uh, the digital asset space right now. Uh, and so there are allegations when there are episodes like the uh, Continental Pipeline episode where a digital currency is used to make the transfer, that people think that that is uh, a, a prevalent use. Uh, but quite frankly, it's not a prevalent use. That doesn't mean... Uh, that we don't have to be very careful uh, as we're legislating and regulating in this space to protect consumers and to protect the integrity of non-fiat currency. And nobody's in a better position to do that than the United States. That's why I want to innovate in this space and work with other members of Congress and regulators to innovate in this space so we can ferret out those allegations and those opportunities around the world but still keep it free enough uh, to innovate and be a great store of value for everyday people all over the world. Senator, while we have you here, and you're from a, uh, I don't know if you've been on before, I hope to have you on a, a lot, but uh, being from a, uh, the, the great state of Wyoming, kind of a red state, you, you point out that, and I hear it said all the time, you know, infrastructure is bipartisan. Infrastructure, I hear that all the time. But you're disappointed and on the record saying that uh, you're disappointed that, that the Biden administration has made it such a partisan issue. What do you mean by that? Well, the committee that I'm on, the Environment and Public Works Committee, uh, put out uh, a $35 billion bill, bipartisan and unanimous out of our committee, uh, to pay for water and sewer. This week, we'll probably put out a bipartisan, probably unanimous bill uh, on highways uh, at $311 billion over five years. That's how you legislate. That's how you spend money. That's the appropriate way. You don't pick big numbers. Gee, let's spend $2 trillion. Uh, who wants what? What should we spend it on? We're supposed to be, that's exactly the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be finding what infrastructure needs do we have, how much is it going to cost to pay for them, and how can we put it out in a way that is predictable and provides certainty. That is not what the Obama administration is doing, and that's why their effort is going to fail. Senator, uh, we appreciate uh, you coming on. Uh, uh, and uh, are you the first... Uh First woman from from Wyoming to, to be in the Senate. I think congrats uh, on that too. And and it's uh, we hope this is like we always say, the beginning of a long relationship. Love to have you come uh, come back on. Uh, especially, uh, you must stick out like a sore thumb in terms of Bitcoin back there. Do, do people do they avoid you as you're walking around there and and kind of go woo when when you're. Well. <laughs> Well, it is kind of a new area of uh, expertise. We get it around and, here. I get it around here. Uh, anyway, uh, we appreciate it. Th thank you for your time uh, today. Thank you, Joe. All right, Andrew. Okay, coming up uh, when we return, EV startup uh, Lordstown Motors saying it needs help and money. We're going to bring you an update with uh, shares under some big-time pressure.